Hello humans, welcome to game development operations um, from start to finish. Uh, now we're going to be talking about um, working with P4V basically. This is the visual client of Perforce and um, you know how exactly what's the workflow there. So let me just go to draw IO real quick. Oh. Okay. Draw IO. Right. Uh, here we're gonna have a flowchart which I shall you know it's pretty simple so um, you have your perforce server and then you have your workbench don't worry I'll explain all of this later um, and then there's yourself all right okay so um, depot this is the depot your current depot this is your workspace and this is your actual these are your actual files okay so these two things are on your local machine the depot is obviously on the server whether it's local or not depends entirely on yourself but uh, let's say this is blue well let's say this is the final result this is blue way it's variable and then that's you where you know you suck at everything so there we go you got this uh, interesting um, uh, set of colors here anyway What's going to happen is you're going to basically check out an item from the depot and it's going to go into your workspace. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to work from basically the workspace is going to manage your files, your file structure, and that's how you're going to work from. Uh, after that, you can submit files to the workspace, but you don't have to actually still check them in. As in, in other words, you don't have to submit them to the depot. You can just put them in your workspace. Now, your workspace always has a copy of the depot, right? This put this this way this is actually a copy this is a di direct copy of the depot there's also uh, <clears throat> uh, you know obviously it's communicating back and forth because it depends on exactly uh, you know like you can check out stuff and check in stuff but the depot is basically your master and it sends your files to your workspace um, the cool thing about this is you can actually work offline like you don't have to have this connection once your workspace is synced up with the depot uh, you can work on things uh, even though they are not directly connected to the depot obviously of course if someone else works on a particular file you have to you'll have to merge it somehow or you know you have two different versions uh, because uh, you know the longer you are uh, disconnected from the depot the more likely it is that all your files will be uh, outdated uh, but you know if it's just you or a couple of people and you know what you're working on you know like you shouldn't really need to to submit every like every five minutes to submit to the depot. You could, uh, let's say once a week even you can do this, depending on how much money you're willing to spend. Um, well, well, obviously this is, uh, you know, this only applies to internet, um, you know, virtual machines and such. Uh, you can have your depot running once every, let's say, you know, once every three or four days, even once a week, upload everything, then shut it down. It could cost you no more than five bucks, all right? Uh, so in terms of price, that's really affordable. Uh, because it doesn't have to be on at all times. Uh, obviously, you need to coordinate with the team members. You don't want to be uh, working on, a, on an outdated file or someone makes a correct correction and suddenly everything you do, you know, just doesn't, you know, basically invalidates all your work. So uh, this is really cool because, like I said, uh, locally, this doesn't really matter, right? Locally, whether it's your workspace or your depot, it doesn't really matter because, uh, you know, you have zero lag. It's always on as long as your computer is on. It's always the depot. So... It really shouldn't be having many problems like this but when it comes to online stuff obviously the workspace is uh sort of like your your your, your uh how's it a gas station type stop it's not your destination but you can stop there indefinitely <clears throat> okay uh next when we're talking about checking out and checking in stuff um you actually have to once you check things in you actually have to submit them to the depot and okay this uh, suddenly turned into a default setting so you have to submit it to the depot well all right we actually have to set this up the right way anyway you have to submit it back to the depot so this is basically you're submitting things to the workspace and the workspace submits it to the depot uh, you have to obviously tell the workspace to do it um, checking things out like this always this is always operational obviously so the depot and the workspace they're always talking to each other um well not always whenever you you know give an explicit explicit command but like it's easy enough to figure out what they're doing and obviously then you check uh, stuff out like yourself so this is the color coding so to speak okay you check a file out of the workspace 
Uh, this file becomes available within your file system. You can modify it, do whatever you want to it. Then you put it back into the workspace. It could stay there indefinitely, or you could submit it to the depot, and the depot is going to put it in, you know, in the version control. Um, it, you, like you add the change list and such. Um, <clears throat> so um, another thing you can do, obviously, is to shelve. Well, not obviously. It's not very obvious, but you could also have a shelf. So uh, before you actually submit something, right, you can actually have... Uh, something called a shelf so you can uh, shelf uh, files uh, what basically what, what this basically does right is it enables other people to check uh, your files without being uh, them being um, sent to the depot now obviously once you shelf them you can after the afterwards submit them but that means that um, like let's say you know let's use Darth Vader again so uh, there's Vader and um, you know he can actually uh, you know he can he's gonna have an influence over the shelf he can request uh, files out of the shelf and uh, you know check them out and then um, see if everything if everything is in order and then put them back in uh, so uh, in general it's a pretty cool feature uh, which you probably won't use much however it's available to you all right so Vader is yellow um, so you know it, it's not that big of a deal where you can uh, you know, you always have to submit. You can shelf things, but then again, like I said, it's only f so that other people can check your uh, change lock. Okay, if you're not sure if this code is good enough, maybe send it to your supervisor if you have any. All right, or maybe you just shelf it there so you check it. You know, later yourself before submitting it. But in general, I I found this to be a quite useless uh, thing when it comes to small teams, or at least. I don't know, up to five or six people, maybe it'll be fine. Uh, obviously, for big companies, this may be, you know, this is probably very valuable uh, because you can't just have every any crap being submitted to the depot. Um, yeah. So um, now that we have this out of the way, let's open up the workspace. So um, we're going to connect to the local host. Actually, no, let's connect to... Um, okay, let's just connect to the local host because I forgot what the, you know, what the whole thing is but before we do this we need to actually create a workspace so we're going to click on new uh, remember this is the depot flying saucers uh, now we're going to go to a workspace and select the route now because remember uh, because uh, we have we're going to make a game after all we should i believe go into uh you know and, and set up a server in such a way that you can actually um you know uh, so they can work after that so uh, navigate to where your projects are. Now in this case, I'm just gonna put it over here. Um, <clears throat> and you're gonna say that this workspace is called, um, well, I'm gonna call it uh, tut space, tut space, right? This is the um, workspace where we're gonna do the tutorial. Uh, obviously it's empty right now, but uh, don't worry about that. So you're gonna select the folder and this is where your your workspace will actually be. Uh, you know, this is this is the this is the file uh, folder that you're gonna have your file stored in. All right. So uh, now that you have this, don't worry about stream. Now the workspace mappings um, they work quite interestingly. Interestingly, but you know, I'll, sh I'll show it to you later down the line. Also, when you when you're setting up your workstation, which is this is the name. This is what other people will see when they when they try to check out a file that you've checked out yourself. So, you know, call it something normal, like uh, Flintstone um, Cave. Okay, let's say, well, not Cave, but like uh, Flintstone Space. So this is your uh, workspace, and whenever someone, you know, tries to figure out where that file is and why isn't it available, well, it's because, because Mr. Flintstone checked it out, yeah? Uh, so essentially, you're going to click OK now and uh, log in. And... It's going to ask you to populate the server with files. Uh, now, obviously, if you already have some stuff to populate the server with, uh, you can just, you know, browse and just add different folders or something, right? But, um, you know, don't bother with this for now. Just click uh, cancel. Okay, so um, here's your depot. We got Flying Sorcerers, which is your depot, and you've got your workspace, which is Game Dev Tit Space, right? Um, how does the server population actually work? Uh, let's go into the um, let's go into go into this uh, tit space and create a new folder. Call it uh, test, and in the folder we're gonna create a new text document tester testers. Yeah, you get it. 
so now we got two uh, extra files in here. Let's close it out and uh, refresh. So suddenly out of the blue, we've got two, uh, two files, two folders. We got the test and the tester. Now, basically what happens is you're going to click add. Okay. This is going to mark, this is going to mark these files to be added to the depot. And uh, after that, they're going to be checked in, but we're not going to do that. This is just uh, an illustration to show you how exactly this works. Uh, we're going to get more in, de in depth about how this whole um, uh, thing operates once we get our project rolling. Uh, which is, you know, we're going to start this in the next video, set up the project, etc. Uh, but the most important thing is to, kn to know is that your project will be inside the workspace, okay? Um, because uh, Unreal works in such a way that it automatically detects the workspace when the project is, uh, you know, a child of the workspace directory. Otherwise, you're going to have to type in your workspace, your password, and all the local host crap every single time you log in and, you know, you start working on your game. So um, unless you want to do that, I recommend you put your workspace where your uh, project is going to be at. Anyway, we'll delete these files for now. Um, actually, mark for delete is for delete from the depot. So if you want to actually physically delete them, I think there was a way to physically delete the file from here. I'm not sure. No, we can remove from workspace, I suppose. No, you can't do it. Um, I'm not sure maybe it's possible but uh, like it doesn't really matter you, you, you don't have to do it from here you can just go and delete it yourself and they're gonna disappear from um, your uh, you know from your workspace anyway just just understand that this is where the workspace uh, the the Unreal Engine um, project will be located at all right so uh, when selecting your uh, directory uh, make sure it's one where uh, you know you have plenty of space because you never know how much space you're gonna need for your game, and you know that you have some kind of uh, uh, you know file structure, right? You, you got something that you can understand, which is what, and you know what's going where. Anyway, um, that's it, guys. Let me just close this real quick, and uh, you know, next video we're gonna start working with Unreal, and uh, I'm actually gonna go through which software we're gonna use and which software you're gonna need, um, you know, just so that you can get ready for uh, you know the whole working uh, in the pipeline you know, that I've, I've explained before. All right, guys. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, see you. See you next time. Bye bye.